Hi guys, it's Laura from Business Academy Online. So I thought I'd step in front of the camera for once and take you through a new series of videos that we're going to be doing on different constructive response exam questions. So today we're going to do a sample level four constructive response question. And this is something that you could be asked in either uh, L4 M1 or L4 M8. Please note that if this question came up in L4 M8, it would be associated with a scenario, a case study. So you will get four compulsory ones on that module. So this one is just a standard essay question to help you get to grips with what's expected of you in your exam. So I have created a framework for maximizing exam success. And if you haven't checked it out already, go to www.businessacademy-online.com and go to our blog where I'll talk you through a lot more exam and revision techniques that might be useful to you. So to maximize your chances of getting the best marks in the exam, you need to follow my C framework. That is statement, explanation, example. So you make a statement, you then explain that statement. And remember, everything that you say in that exam is a chance to get a mark from the examiner. And then you give an example. So an example in a normal non-case question would be something from your own experience. But if it is a case study, then you should use the example from the case. So if you do this with each one, that should maximize your marks. And I'm going to show you how to do this a little bit today. So this is your question. Let's make it full screen so you can look at it properly. Explain five selection criteria that a procurement department might use to identify suitable suppliers for a new product range. Okay, so what the question is asking you for, the command word is explain. So it wants you to talk it through. And we need five selection criteria. Don't give them more than that. They will only mark the first five that you put down. And therefore you should have five clear paragraphs going through each one of these. You might want to define something to start in your introduction. It's always a nice idea to define something before. Here, you could define what selection criteria is. You could say that this is part of the sourcing process and define sourcing, how and where goods and services are obtained and so on and so on. So you can mention any selection criteria. It's totally fine. I've just selected five for you but you may choose other ones. So financial capabilities would be the first selection criteria. And this is your statement. You then have to explain that statement. So the supplier's financial stability in terms of profitability and liquidity, gearing and investment ratios. Credit ratings could also be looked at. Now, obviously I'm just showing you a really rough example here. If you're going to state liquidity, gearing and so on, you might want to explain what they are just very briefly so the examiner knows that you're not just throwing down jargon and you actually understand it. So we've got the statement of financial capabilities and we've then got the explanation going into what we mean by that. So are they profitable? Can they meet their debts? Have they got lots of long-term loans? Are they attractive to invest in? And what's their credit rating score? And then as the example, we have to relate back to the context. So we've got five selection criteria, but it's talking about identifying suitable suppliers for a new product range. So every point that you make has to address that context. As this is a new supplier for a new product range, the full financial ratio should be looked at as, as it's the unknown, it brings with it more risk. So obviously you need to do your full financial capabilities because the new product range in itself is risky. We need to make sure the supplier doesn't go bust on us. Then we have technical capability. So again, that's a statement. We can explain that by saying the supplier's technical tools that they've used, their processes and expertise and know-how, and the level of adaptability, how agile and flexible their staff are, their human resources. So you're explaining what you mean. You then have to give an example. So for example, if this is an innovative new product, then it's key that supplier is able to meet the technical requirements, which could include things like blockchain experience, you know, some type of IT experience, tooling requirements in terms of quality, technical ability, and so on and so on. So you could drill into these areas. 
But as you can see, for each criteria, I have shown you clearly a statement of what the criteria is, and then an explanation of that and an example. You don't have to do it like this. You could say the first selection criteria, the second selection criteria, or you could just put headers. So you could put financial capabilities as a header and then start to write your essay paragraph underneath it. So these are the first two selection criteria. We have to move on and look at the following three. Production capacity. This is the capacity that suppliers are ready and able to commit to the organization's current and future product and volume requirements. So in other words, can they meet your current needs in terms of capacity and your likely future needs? And how do they manage the cyclic or cyclic nature of the product to ensure uninterrupted supply? So essentially, how do we ensure that we don't run out? We need security of supply to make sure that they can meet it at all times. So how are they going to manage that capacity? For example, demand for a new product can be variable. So can the supplier meet the maximum demand that we believe could happen or the minimum demand forecasted? Capacity is going to be key because we need to be able to get it to the market to get any sort of profit in. Again, these are not the ones that you have to pick, but these are the ones that I've suggested for you. Systems capability, to integrate in a way compatible with the organization, assessing the level of IT development, e-business potential, in view of where are they based, the geographical distance and time zones. So can they integrate systems with you? Do they have the capacity? Do they have the knowledge level? Do they have the money available to have integrated systems with you? For example, if the organization wants to work to a just-in-time or an agile supply, then integrated systems would be complete necessity to ensure that supply is not disrupted. So this might mean for this new product range, you may be ruling out smaller supplies who can't afford the systems capability that you require. So this is what you need to do to eke it out, to get those five marks. Waffle is your friend, guys. Waffle is your friend. And so we've got the final area to look at, and that is quality and quality assurance. So quality and quality assurance is our statement. It includes factors like fitness for purpose and conformance to spec. If the product's perishable or has a short shelf life, then this will require clear measures for quality control and assurance. So there's our explanation. Your example for this could be something like, do they have a quality management certification like ISO 9001? Are they able to conform to spec previously for maybe other products that you've looked at? You could even say, you know, with new product ranges, quality is key. You want to get it right first time. So you might want to work with them for quality assurance and look at percentage rejects for the first batch and so on and so on. All of these are selection criteria that you would look at. So that brings us to the end of this question. If you get a question which looks something along the lines of this five selection criteria, you can choose any selection criteria. If you can link it back to your own organization, it'll be even better. So maybe sustainability or environmental factors could be a huge one for you. Perhaps technical isn't important. So choose the ones that you think you could talk about or the ones that relate best to the case. I think that's very important. But also key is your ability to meet the context. There may be marks associated with you answering in the context of the question. And by context, I mean the new product range. So each point you make, you have to link back. I hope you found this useful. Please check back for another one soon. And I will catch you on the flip side. Bye for now. Bye.